Hi guys, happy Sunday. Um, it's Claris and we are just getting ready to do another live uh, tutorial or sorry, not tutorial, well, tutorial, live painting session. I'm just gonna give it a few minutes for everyone to kind of trickle in and then we can begin. Um, I'll ramble for a little bit while people are kind of coming in. So this week, um, I spent most of the week, well, a few minutes a day, just kind of experimenting with the Dr. PH Martin's uh, Radiant Concentrated Watercolor. And so I did a couple of these each day, and this is what I ended up with. So I really like these colors. Uh, the only downside, like I mentioned several times, is uh, if you're presenting this, this to someone, it needs to be kept in a spot that's away from the light. Um, and for this week's tutorial, I ended up doing this right here. Um, the drawing for these lemons and these florals are actually available as a download uh, in the description for this. So hope you guys got a chance to catch these. If you were looking to get to sort of see what I did here, I posted them as IG little videos uh, on IGTV, so you can check that out on on Instagram. And this obviously is on YouTube. Um, so yeah, I just want to quickly make sure that I have uh, my screen open so I can see your comments, if there are any, or questions as we go along. Today I have something fun for everybody. Um, Someone had said greetings, right? Yes, third eye open. Hello, welcome. Thanks for joining. Um, so just to give you a quick overview about what we're going to be doing today. Uh, today we're going to do a nice loose floral session uh, on a bouquet of flowers. Hey Becky, welcome. Uh, for this session we will be using dominantly my St. Petersburg, White Knights. Hi, Pamela. Hi, Kathleen. Um, yes, excited that everyone's also excited to be doing this session together. Uh, we're doing something slightly different. So, well, not exactly different. Really and truly, if you've done most of my tutorials, you can kind of put them together and do something like this. So, as I was saying, colors I'm using are dominantly my St. Petersburg colors. I'm using the violet. I have the Matter Lake. Um, and I have the, this is, this I believe is Burnt Umber. And then I have Mars Brown. Or maybe I've mixed up the names. So these, and then I'm also going to be using a bit of the yellow ochre. Just to give in a little bit of yellow because that would be a nice offset with the violets. So I'll keep that out as well. And then for my brushes, I have my faithful ones, which are the silver black velvet in the eight, um, the four, the one, uh, sorry, the uh, mop brush in the one, and then the Princeton Neptune in the eight. So I'm just going to keep all of these handy in case I need it. And then quickly say hi to more people. Hi, Ginger. So glad you love the lemons. I hope everyone kind of got a chance to try them. I was quite pleased with them. Um, hi, Deborah. Hi, Louise. Hi, Janet. Hi, Beverly. And then uh, hi, Luna. Thanks so much, guys. Oh my gosh, I love that everyone says hi when they come in. It's like we're in the same room. So love it. Okay, so let's start. So I'm just going to give you a brief overview of what we're going to be doing so then you have an idea before we proceed. I have my brushes, I have my water, I have my paper towel just in case. And uh, I, I've roughly, using a pencil, very lightly, I've drawn in a um, triangular shape. And I've had, and I've just kind of drawn in these two diagonal lines here. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing, uh, painting this like an ice cream cone. And this is where the browns come in. And then from the cones, we're going to have all these florals kind of coming out. So I'm excited for it. I hope you guys are as well. 
and let's begin. I'll give you a couple of seconds to kind of draw this in while I'm painting, uh, sorry, mixing colors. Um, it's just really quick, or if you don't want to draw it, you can just paint it right in. I just wanted it in there just for reference because I am doing this as a tutorial or a live session, so I wanted to make sure things were good. So to start off, I will start off with the number one uh, squirrel mop brush to apply my brown and the first brown I'm going to be doing is give me a second um, it's going to be uh, the burnt umber which is the lighter of the two I think I have the Mars brown which is the darker one and burnt umber so it's a nice light brown I'm just going to show you swatch it somewhere so you can kind of see so we'll use that for the base coat and then we'll go in um, to the areas to apply some shadow with the Mars Brown. Okay, so where is a, what's a good enough paper that I can swatch it on? Okay, so this is just paper that was lying on the side, but this is what it looks like. So we'll be getting this as the base of the cone and then doing let me swatch the other one for you, giving you guys more time to finish your triangle. And this is the darker brown. Okay, should not just paint it on there, just put it on the side. So this is the dark brown that we'll use to blend in for shadows. All right, so light, dark. Ready? Good, let's start. So, as I said, I'm going to be using my squirrel mop brush to just kind of apply water first and then I'll get some of the color and go in and start from there. So I'm just gonna start in. Hi Lydia, hi Pamela, hi Annie. Awesome, everyone's here. This is great. So I'm just putting in water first. Um, just a coat of water so that when I go back in with my color it should help spread and give it a nice um, loose spread of color. So I kind of went outside my line here and I can see that because I'm just bending my head to kind of see against the light. So just Try to not go outside the line because then when you go in with the color, it's going to spread out in the area where the water is. Oops, some brown came on here. Alright, so next I will get some of the brown. And I am going to just lay it on like so. And spread it around. So this is fairly easy. I'm just going to make sure it kind of goes all over the place. Keeping some light and dark areas, which kind of gives it like a light and shadowy kind of effect, but also kind of keeping it loose because this is not a perfect picturesque painting we're going for. I'm just gonna add some water at the top so it's not a harsh edge, but just like a fade out almost. And once I've done that, I'm just going to get a little more of the brown and add it on the sides so I'm adding some on this side and to the very bottom as well. And then I'll do some on this side, pushing it down to the bottom. So because it, it's normally a lot darker at the bottom and to the sides because you have the shadows. That's what I'm doing here. So I'm going to add a little more shadow on this side so it just doesn't look like a regular um, 
outline that we're giving to this, but more of a shadowy effect. And I'm just dabbing away color into here and just watching it seep in and blend in. And I like this white area that I have happening here. Uh, it happened naturally, obviously. It wasn't intentional, but it's, I guess it could be a nice... Um, ray of light that's kind of reflecting on this so I like it so if you have anything natural that way just kind of leave it i'm just going to add a couple of them over here because the florals will be right on top um and now once i have that this is going to be the area where the cone overlaps so for this i will use another brush because i want to use more color less water um, and for this, I'll just take the same color. Yes, I'll take the same color and just make sure it's a more saturated amount on your brush. And we'll just do a light line and let's just see how that transitions right now. It all depends on how much water you have laid down. Um, for some, it might blend in a lot more. Um, for some, it might, if, you're, if your water is dried up already on your page, uh, it might be a nicer stronger color that's laid out for me it's still pretty damp but i like the effect that it's giving me so i'm just kind of sticking with it and we'll give it some time to dry up let's see how it transitions once it's dried uh, we might need to go back in and add a little more color and that's totally fine uh, because we need to do the nice waffle pattern happening with the darker brown anyways so I'm going to give this time, give this some time to kind of figure itself out as it dries. And we can move on to the florals very carefully because this is still kind of damp. I'm um, just making sure my edges and stuff are good to go before I kind of move on. All right, so I think that's fairly good. Um, we can move on to the florals now. So because this area is still damp, I'm going to start off a floral um, to the top, giving it a little bit of space at the bottom, and we could always add greenery to kind of overlap on this. So that's how we go around this so that it doesn't blend in. So for this, I will use my, um, let's see, I'm going to use a blend of the purple and the matter lake, the violet and the matter lake. So keeping my browns aside, I will use my Princeton 8 and I'm just going to get some of the purple. I have some colors pre-mixed on here already, but I'm just going to do a brand new section here where I'm mixing it. I'm going to get some of that Matter Lake Red, which is like a pink. And it gives me a nice jewel tone, pink sort of color. I'm just going to get more purple, mix that in there to the side because I like the two variations. Um, and you'll see what I'm going to do with these. So, okay, so I'm going to start off with the purple mixture with the red and then we'll go in with the red later. So first things first, leaving that aside. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna do some simple florals here. Uh, and these are uh, like heart-shaped florals. So the first thing we'll do is, I'm just straightening out my brush. It looks like a hair has kind of bent. All right, so we're gonna do these petals in the form of a heart. I don't know if any of you have done this sort of thing before but so I'm just literally just doing a heart with one stroke dipping in water getting another stroke in and leaving it loose and now I can go in with my number eight um, squirrel no silver black velvet I'm getting more of the pink and I'm just going to do it on this side okay clearly I need more of the pink so I'm just going to get it straight from here. I need a 
tad bit more. There we go. So literally, if you cannot do the heart in one swoop, just do one stroke, two strokes, and you got your petal. And I'm just leaving the ends or the center of it very um, rough. So it's linear almost, like a linear finish. Um, and I wanted these to blend in, but it looks like this purple dried up really quickly. So I'm gonna go back in on this side and do the purple with the hopes that the pink blends in just like that, getting more water on my brush. And I'm adding the second stroke. And there we go, we have our three petals. Uh, for the rest, I think what I'll do is I will, I can see there's a lot of water pooling here. So I'm just gonna try and see if I can have it go to the center and then possibly just help it by using a paper towel. So yeah, so the next one we'll do is over here. I should actually probably just stand up and position myself this way so it's easier. And getting more of the pink. I'm gonna try and do one more. There we go. So it's very rough. We're using the whole idea of each petal being a um, heart and you're just trying to blend it in. Now, you might come across something like this where it's almost like a stain. You can just take a brush and kind of try and sweep it down to kind of move the color down or you can leave it be as is. It's really up to you. Um, at this point, what I'm going to do is I will take more of the purple just using my number four and I want to dab it in the center and so it gives me that nice dark to light kind of effect and it's purple blending in with, I guess, purple tones. So it shouldn't be a terrible uh, looking outcome. And it gives me that nice little center. You can even kind of go in and just add a little bit of linear lines using the purple to kind of have it look like a slightly detailed center as opposed to just open that way and then just leave it if you don't want to if you feel like the edges have a little bit too much water like I have some water pooling here I'm just going to move it around give it a softer edge maybe even take some color down to the bottom to give it that linear sorry light and dark effect and then just leave it because these are loose corals so here's one floral. So the next one we want to do is um, let's do something that is like um like a rose. Let's do a rose. I did say simple florals, but let's just do a rose as well. But before we do the rose, let's do another one of these and um so I started off with the purple first, the mixture, so I have that here. I'm gonna use my number eight. So again, I'm being repetitive so you guys can get the hang of this. Taking some of that Matter Lake Red, some of the violet, mixing it up. And then I can use the Silver Black Velvet to do the purple itself. Um, so yeah, so the first one, let's have this floral kind of peeking out this way. So I'm just going to make sure I have enough water. Adding one stroke here, another stroke here. Bringing all the color down to the center. Um, then I'm just going to use the silver black velvet. I'm just going to take more water, but and just just the tip of it has some of the red. So let's see what that looks like when we kind of add in the strokes. And it's a lot lighter, and I want it to be lighter because I don't want it to be as dark as this. And I'm pushing down all the water to the center. 
so that it doesn't pool at the top. And another thing you can do is just take your paper towel and dab in the area where there's more water. And then just push down the color. So I'll leave that one just as is. And this time instead of doing the purple um, for the center, I'm just going to take some of the pre-mix color that I have here and mix in a little more of the red and I'll do that instead just to kind of make it stand out from this one here. Just a variation. All right, and then we'll add some green because it's still <clears throat> fairly damp here. So for the green, I will just use the regular green from Um, actually, no, I'm not going to use the regular green. I forgot to tell you guys. I am going to be using the Azure Blue, which comes with uh, St. Petersburg White Nights. I'm going to mix some of that here. And I like it because it, it's almost like a teal. So I'm going to mix some of this with the... Um, with some of the yellow that it comes with. Uh, and this yellow is the... Cadmium lemon medium. So I'll just take a little bit of that and mix it in. And I'm just going to add a quick bottom to this, like just a few strokes. It shouldn't be too overpowering. But I want there to be a clear um, indication that that is. A green that's at the bottom. Now some of it is pooling in the red so I'm just going to kind of go ahead and wipe that off. Help it along. And then just because I have some on here I can just use this to create some of the greenery that kind of goes with this. Um, so my idea for doing this bunch of florals is to make it seem like a wildflower stack of florals almost. So we'll do really thin lines and kind of just poking around and tendrils and all that good stuff. So, and also with a combination of some bigger leaves. So this leaf here that I'll do extending from here is just going to be, I'm doing one stroke, two strokes, three strokes, and I'm giving it that viney look. Um, same thing here, one, two, three. You can just add a couple on the side here and there. I'm just going to have to turn this ever so slightly. One, two, that looks like a finger pointing down almost okay let's sit. there we go and now I'll just use water and try and draw from it to create some of the other leaves on here so for instance if we want to do another one here but kind of faded in the background because I don't want it to be overpowering too much. Same thing here. I just want it to be light. Um, just do a couple of strokes. It doesn't have to look exactly like the leaves. This is a loose floral, so keep it less detailed the better for us all. And so now that we've done this, we can do a couple more of the same kind of leaves just to kind of do it in another area. Then we don't have to come back to doing them. Um, mixing it with some of that green that I have mixed on my area here. And I will do one poking out on this side.
And for this one, I'll just do one, two, three. So they're a lot looser than these ones, right? So that's the effect I was actually initially going for, just to have it be very, very, very loose. And just have the color speak for itself, really. So that's good enough. I'm just going to add a little bit of water and create faint ones just like that on the edge. And then just kind of taper off with a hint of, I guess, leaves happening here. All right, same thing over here, actually. And then leave it at that. There we go. So we got some nice movement happening on here. Um, uh, moving on, we are going to do some taller looking florals here. So let's use the number just washing the brushes first and thinking which brush to use next um, yeah let's use the number four actually and for this next color we'll use um, we we'll use the thinking which floral to do first. Okay, let's do the, okay, let's use the pink that we have happening. Now this is very similar to what we have on there already. So what I would suggest is to get a little more of the purple and maybe make it almost like a mauve, like a very soft, because we want this to be lighter so these florals remain in the forefront and then the others kind of fade in the back. Um, so I'm going to try and mix it to the best of my abilities. Let's see what happens. So it's all about the ratio of pink and purple that you have going on. I'm just going to... still too purple. All right, I've just mixed a bit here. Let's see how that transitions. So for these ones, we're just going to do really light, um, tiny flowers that kind of extend from the branches. So uh, we'll do the florals first and then we'll do the branch, the branches next. Uh, and then the second time we do it, we'll, we'll do it the other way around and see which method we prefer. So making sure I have enough color. I'm just going to do a couple of um, strokes that kind of look like this. So just very lightly. So I'll do one here. I'll do one floral here. I'll do another one like smack dab in the center. And I'm just doing very loose strokes, leaving white space in between. Um, I'll get some water on the brush and continue this effort of creating little little flowers and I'm going to taper off by doing lesser detail at the top and then it gets thinner so it's wider at the bottom gets thinner at the at the top and then I'm washing off all the color and I'm just going to do a couple of Um, strokes here and there to kind of show there's some in the background and now once I have this done I'm just gonna go ahead and get some of the green that I pre-mixed which was right here so I mixed that got the azure blue and then I mixed some of the yellow cadmium yellow and I'm getting this green so for this now, I'm just going to go ahead and join, create the stem and join the florals. And it gives you that nice, cute little fading, blending effect. But it's a very thin line as well. So it's like delicate florals that happen or that are happening. 
uh, at this point, uh, if you want to introduce like a little bit of yellow to it, I'm just taking a tad bit of it and I'm just adding a couple of strokes to kind of make the red pop. I didn't initially plan this, but I'm looking at the colors and I really like how the yellow is, well, the the pink is quite nice, but adding a little bit of yellow would almost give it that nice little pop. And so I figured, let's try that. So that's what we're doing. And I'm just adding a couple of strokes of the green just to kind of make it seem like there's greenery on the on the stem. And now we can do this exact same thing over here. And then let's just make it slightly taller. So again, what we did here, we laid down the pink first. So this time we'll do the green first. Um, so when we're laying down the green this time, we just need to make sure that it's damp enough that when we're ready to do the pink, it still gives us this blendy effect. So where's my green? Right here. So I'm just going to get some of the green. Did it dry up already? Wow. Okay. Just mixing my blue. So I'm mixing more, getting some of the blue and then some of my yellow. Mixing it in to give me that green that I want. All right, so I'm just going to start, I'm going to turn my page this way just so I can get this side. So I'll have this one protruding this way. I can already tell you I have not used enough water. But I'm also trying to make it thin. See how I kind of messed up by making it thicker here. Let's see how it pans out. So I'm going to add a couple of stems. Okay, see, again, it's thick. So it's kind of, I guess this method is a lot easier then. So for the floral, sorry, I'm going to use my number eight, get some of the pink, make sure I have enough water on here, and I'm going to add those little strokes like I did previously. But I'm kind of afraid to touch the green because it might just dirty up the the pink. So I added a little bit of the purple that I had pre-mixed on my palette. Adding some more here and just kind of tapering it off as we go up with the amount of detail I mean. Um, I'm going to add a couple more at the base just so it can cover up my thick mistake here. Add a couple more here just sporadically. Adding my little dots to kind of make it seem loose and yeah just loose and I guess pretty I like the dots yeah uh, and then now we go in with the yellow and just give it a tinge of that yellow just so it can have that same effect that we've got here so I'm just getting some yellow over here just going to add it in areas where I can see that it's still slightly damp. And even if it isn't, just add some to the side anyways. It'll still give it that nice pop. And then I did have some at the bottom as well. So I'm just going to add that there and then leave it that way. So that's really pretty and delicate. And we'll do one more, but I think this one should be a little... Because we've, we've done everything in twos, and you know how I like to do things in threes. So let's do one more and make this maybe peeking out from here just ever so lightly, slightly. Um, and this one we can add a little bit more of the mauve in it too. And I'll try to get 
try and make this as light as possible. Let's see how that works. So just adding a couple of strokes and then just immediately tapering it off. And sporadic. And then I have, I believe I have yellow on this, but I'm just going to add some of the green to the tip and join this. And it doesn't have to completely connect. And um, this one I'm kind of making it looser in terms of connection. So just leaving it open-ended almost. I'm just going to add a couple of more just to make it seem not so linear. These have a little more width to it at the bottom. So I'm just going to add some of that. And then adding my little dots that I like to do. And then finally we can do the yellow. So just adding some yellow. So it's funny, you would think that work like this should be easier to do because it's so loose and you're not quite trying to imitate a, fl a flower to the T. But as you can see, detail like this actually does take a little bit of time. Uh, not that easy as you would think by just looking at it. Um, let's see, what else can we do? We can do, let's do a little more uh, yellow florals, just so it can kind of be a nice offset with all the purple, pink, mauve stuff happening over here. And uh, before I do that, I will, actually, let's just go straight for it. Um, I did say I did say a rose, so let's do a yellowy kind of rose over here, and then, yeah, we can do some leaves and kind of finish this off. So, um, for the rose, I'm going to use my number eight silver black velvet, and I will take a comp. Yeah, no, I'll just use most of the yellow from here, and let's just see how that pans out. I will most likely be mixing some of the brown with this just to give it a nice shadow and darker center. So let me lay down the center first and then we can evolve from there. Um, I like how this is happening over here so I think I should do the rows on this side and then maybe just a bud on this side. All right, so I'm going to start the center and for my rose centers, you guys know, I like to just kind of do little comma strokes and then dip my brush, get some water and kind of add more strokes. And now once I've done this, um, I'm just going to get some of the well, what did I say this was? This is the ochre, yellow ochre. And I'm just going to add a couple of those for the center just to kind of give it light and dark. So it doesn't look like it's a flat yellow rose, but this is like the shadowy effects. And I'm just lightly adding a couple of strokes here and there. And then once I have that done, I'm just going to take my mop brush and with just water on it, I'm just going to swish the color around and keep it very light. I can go in with a little more um, yellow to kind of make it blend some more. So I'm just going to do that. And then I'm just, the flo the rose is facing in this direction, so I don't want to overdo any of the petals on this end. I just want to kind of leave it open-ended. So I'm just going to take 
the mop brush again and just kind of blend the color so it phases off or fades off. And then I'll just do a couple here, leaving a lot of white space. And now that I see how the yellow looks, like it's quite close to what's happening with the brown here. So I think what I will do here is adding a little more orange to it. So this is what happens, guys. Like when you, you try stuff, uh, it might not necessarily go out exactly the way you planned it. And then you just have to improvise and kind of catch it right before things get out of hand. So I'm using an orange and I believe this is the golden from St. Petersburg. And I'm just going to add a couple of strokes of this golden orange in hopes that it'll kind of look like one of those two-tone roses. And I'm just adding strokes all around to kind of almost highlight it. Probably start more from the center. And I'm just kind of swishing things around. Again, I'm not giving it too much detail all around. I just want there to be enough contrast so it doesn't blend in too much with what's happening below. And this is my quick fix for that. On the go, rather. Yep. You could also wait for this to dry properly and then see if you want to add anything. You might not. Um, the other thing is, keep in mind, we have yet to sort of do the waffle shape. So that might, um, like we might not even have needed to add any orange, but I like it. So let's just move on. Okay, so I think we'll give this a rest. Let's just do the waffle, the waffle bit, and then we can go back up by then. This should be dried up and we can kind of um, tie it all in by adding just a few more things like greenery wise and yep um, so for the waffle you obviously need the waffle pattern you obviously need to have a thin brush I'm going to use my number four and I will be using the I believe this is the Mars brown which is like a darker brown and I am just going to have the pattern go against like just parallel along the shape of the of the line of the left side of the cone and then we will try and make it as um, straight as possible but again this is a loose painting so we don't want to make it too 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 specific so I'm going to kind of have it trail off not have the the lines be meeting leave them kind of open to kind of give it that loosey look i'm trying my best and try and eyeball obviously you're not going to get get it perfect we're not looking for perfection but as best as you can to kind of just make it as parallel as possible. Thankfully my hand is not shaking today. I normally get anxious doing things like this and then it starts shaking with excitement. So we're just going to continue this parallel linear painting drawing throughout. As well and then we're just tapering off to the edge 
uh, we'll do this one slightly a little bit offset from this just so it doesn't look like because it we're, we're trying to show that it's two different um, areas right so like this is a fork there we go sorry not sure what happened I hope we're not gonna have the same sort of issue like last time uh, but let me just make sure that I have this hooked up properly and then I will um, resume really quickly sorry about that guys I just need to make sure that I am connected properly and this is not going to happen again Give me one second. You can talk amongst yourselves, I guess. <laughs> Sorry, give me a moment to adjust things really quickly. I'm just There we go. Okay. All right. So I don't think anything should happen anymore. I'm just making sure I have my laptop open. Okay. Finishing off the cone. And Now we're gonna do this area here. And I'm just gonna turn it sideways because it's so much easier for me to do it this way. And hopefully, actually let's do it this way because this rose might still be damp. So I'm gonna try and be light and try and get it as loosely as I can and I'm really going to kind of taper off here. All right and then turning it this way and I'm just going to finish off the lines. And notice I'm not going back in for any more color. I just want it to kind of be a stark difference from the lines that we have done at the bottom. There we go. We have our nice little waffle. And now we can kind of, um, we can finish the rest of the florals that are happening and then we are pretty much done. So for the next. Okay, trying to get back on track because I'm not quite sure why it just keeps disconnecting. Like the, everything seems to be fine. And then all of a sudden it's just a blank screen. Um, nope, not battery. Like YouTube is still on as soon as it kind of blanks out my screen. It's weird. I don't know. Anyways, okay, let's just try and plow on through and hopefully things can be better or will be better. Let's see. All right, so we're just going to finish the um, rest of then. And yeah, let's just finish the rest of it. And then this way we're not kind of trying to fight technology here with whatever is happening okay so for these i am going to make them a little more like um the delphinium florals that we normally see with the or i guess delphinium style slash uh wisteria style florals so i'm just going to use a lot of the purple and I'm just going to use the number eight to lay down some of the strokes. So we'll have some here and we'll just do one more there and then we can shut things off here. So I'm just creating 
three little buds with a nice dark purple. 